Welcome to my studio for week two of my winter season vlogs. You've just heard my recording from the spring 2021 of Jasmine Flower, a Chinese folk tune that I grew up with back home in Taiwan. I can't believe it's been over a year since I recorded that for you all on this vlog. Whether you have been here since the last time I used this tune last year or if you're brand new, welcome. I'm your host, Amy Sher. This December, I'm making weekly vlogs in which I show you all the things that I've been making this cold season. I'm a maker of many things, but mainly I am a knitting pattern designer. Aside from knitting, I also sew and bake and weave and cook and play piano. All kinds of making. Oh, and sometimes I spin too. <laughs> I'm still slowly recovering from my cold and I think I have a new one now, but this past week I've been working hard at my designs that are coming up over the next few months. Right now I'm working with some beautiful Libyan Aime, Merino DK in the colorway Dusk. I love winding up and casting on, not just because of a new project, but I feel like it's a time of dreaming and possibility and looking over the colors as I begin to work with it for the first time is so soothing. I'm slowly working away at the pattern that I've named Clara's Playtime Mittens. It's designed for playtime for people of all ages, whether you're two or you're 102. These mittens are convertible, and this week I spent a lot of time finessing instructions for a little <laughs> bum peephole for those of us with cell phones who often need our thumb in public just to operate digital wallets and things like that. This pattern will be going into tech this week and probably into testing over the next couple weeks. It's a really quick knit. If you're not me, <laughs> I've knitted so many times just due to being ill and having brain fog, but here it is in progress and I'm well into my second mitten now, so hopefully it'll be smooth sailing. This last week I also learned to weave over the last week or two. My very first fiber art was sewing, which I think is quite common for many people. Being rather impatient and more than a little bit neurodivergent, I like it when I can see things come together and become an object right away, which is why sewing was so satisfying. Knitting was much slower, but still something is happening. You can kind of see the fabric forming as you go, at least within a few hours, if you're doing it right. I found that my first warp is very much trying my patience. It takes hours, hours, so many hours to even finish winding off your first warp. And then you have many more hours of slaying and threading and beaming, just hoping that you didn't do it wrong. The spoiler is I did do it wrong because I couldn't figure out how to fix my errors on this warp. I will have to live with those errors in my towels. The winding gradually became more and more comfortable for me and with some music, it went by quickly. Before I started weaving, I heard that threading is a lot of people's least favorite part and after my first warp, I totally understand why. It's tedious and error prone and 
Mirrors are not easily fixed in a front to back warp like this. I learned a lot doing my very first thread hang and I was able to apply that knowledge to my second warp which went much more smoothly. And then finally I reached the stage where I get to throw the shuttle but because of the errors I made in threading and slaying it was slow going and it took me nearly five yards of warp before I could get a clean shed to throw it into. You can see me here reaching into the shed trying to get that shuttle across where it got caught in my threading errors. Looking back at this now with one more warp and weaving experience under my belt at the time of recording this audio it's just funny to see how much I've learned and changed and how much I didn't know just the last week. of moving all this new equipment around I haven't had time to keep my studio space clean it's a bit of a mess right now and the studio does go through cycles of messy and clean messy and clean this has happened to your space too lately I'm learning trying to learn to let go of the ideals and since I've been ill, to try to enjoy the minutes that I get to spend with my new craft. And not to worry too much about the details. You can see here by the next day, my weaving has become more natural and my movements have become more practiced. I'm making smaller movements. To make the same picks. It's really rather exciting to film this progress because I get to see the real progress that I'm making in real time and every day I'm improving. I think that's the theme of this week. It's just if you keep at it and put in the time to practice, you'll eventually get better. I've already started the next project, so I'll be back next week to show that. For a family dinner last week, I made three kinds of pie. One was a recipe from the National Center for Home Preservation, which helped me preserve and can green tomatoes from my garden and apples from my local farm box, CSA. And the two other pies were recipes by Smith & Kitchen. My favorite pie of all time is this one, maple nutmeg pie at Smith & Kitchen. It's a custard pie that reminds me of the Japanese style flan that I grew up with in Taiwan. I make it every fall. This year, I feel like I finally got really good <laughs> at making dough and crimping. And I ended up with some of the best pies of my life. I think it was this time last year that I was mildly complaining on Instagram that I could not make a pie nicely to save my life. But over the last year, I really practiced. Maybe that is a theme this episode, but over the last few years, it's a hard lesson that I learned finally in my 30s. I'm finally good at being patient with myself and slow, slowly learning new skills, mistakes and all. Uh, 
I never feel more alive than when I'm learning something new. I think that's part of who I am. I'm a lifelong student and I'll always be looking to learn, looking to improve, learning new crafts. Particularly with my hands, I think anything where I get to work with my hands and make something come true, conjure up a thing that doesn't yet exist in my mind and turn it into a real thing, that's... There's something magical about that. I think that magic of making with your hands, the feeling of yarn running through your fingers or the shuttle of the moon flying back and forth rhythmically. That feeling is why I continue to make even when I'm deathly sick. Keeps my mind calm and gives me something to look forward to even when I'm not well. I hope you're all having a wonderful festive season and I can't wait to be back next week and show you my second warp I'm weaving. Talk to you very soon and thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of this baking video.